Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. I'm your host, Sarah, and I am currently wearing a Jane Austen Band-Aid on my right index finger. Yes, this is what I'm giving you this week as my bookworm credentials. I even wear literary band-aids on my paper cuts. Now, if only it were a paper cut from a book page, then maybe I'd be really cool. Or really, really nerdy. Maybe I'd be nerdy cool. Something. Unless I got a paper cut from a book and then I bled on the book and then I'd just be sad. This conversation is actually getting a little sad. Maybe a little pathetic, so I'm just going to move on, okay? If you're a returning listener, welcome back. Thank you. If you're new to this podcast, yay! We are so happy that you found us. Before we get started, um, just a quick word about the books that we discuss here, because you might be expecting from a podcast called a book review podcast, that I will only be talking about the newest releases or the best sellers on all the books on the bestseller list. But I think of this podcast as more of a book club than a book review. I personally love to read. I always have. And I like sharing books that I've enjoyed with others. So that's what we're doing here. We're just friends hanging out. Maybe you're drinking a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. And so we're hanging out and talking about the books that we love. We're actually going to take a quick break, but when we come back, uh, our topics for today are the Call the Midwife trilogy by Jennifer Wirth and the Fox and O'Hare series by Janet Ivanovich and Lee Goldberg. Stay tuned and we'll be right back. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. We're going to jump right in with our first topic, Call the Midwife by Jennifer Wirth. This is a trilogy of books under the title of Call the Midwife, and they were actually recommended to me by my very best friend in the entire world, who texted me one day and asked if I'd read Call the Midwife, and I hadn't. And then another day she texted me and asked if I'd watched the series Call the Midwife, and I hadn't, and she kept telling me how much she was enjoying both of them, reading them and watching the PBS series. And so I figured I should check them out, which I literally did with the books as I got them from my local library. I mentioned in the um, last episode that I was dragged kicking and screaming into the world of e-readers. But now that I have one, I have to say that being able to buy a book or check a book out of the library without having to leave the house is really this introvert's a dream because I can just go online and find the book that I want to read and check it out of the library. So I got the first book in this in the trilogy and I was sucked right in by the stories. So here's the synopsis. The trilogy of Call the Midwife, Shadows of the Workhouse, and Farewell to the East End chronicles Jennifer Worth's career as a midwife from start to finish. From her arrival in War Scarred Docklands as a wide eyed trainee to the demolition of the tenements and subsequent closure of Nanata's house. It provides a fascinating snapshot of social history, documenting the East End in the days where there was a sense, a real sense of community, when times were tough, but there was plenty of good humor and neighborly support to help the inhabitants through the harsh economic climate. The book also enables readers to follow Jennifer's personal story, as she discovers the amazing resilience of a population still bearing the scars of war, and the vibrant community of the nuns with whom she lives and who teach her the skills of midwifery. In stories that are funny, disturbing, and moving in equal measure, we meet prostitutes and abortionists, bigamist and mischievous nuns, and see Jennifer earn the confidence of the people whose lives are often stranger than fiction. So the book, the trilogy starts out with uh, the first book, Call the Midwife, and it's pretty exclusively just stories of the midwives and the mothers and babies that they interact with in the East End of London. 
Jennifer Worth is the teller of the story. She's the author, and it's from her point of view. And she writes of her experience coming to Nanata's house as a young nurse and midwife. She actually thought she was going to a hospital, so she was pretty surprised when she um, arrived at the address and found herself surrounded by nuns. Um, but she, she learns to love her new community. Um, there are a few other stories besides just wives or mothers and babies, but uh, we get more so more of that in the second and third book. So in this first uh, first book of the trilogy, we really do get a look into the lives of the midwives and the women that they helped the, and the babies they helped deliver. In the first episode, if you uh, listened, I spoke of the Maisie Dobbs series and how I liked it because it gave me a glimpse into England in the 1930s. And this trilogy is another example of that, of that glimpse, because the trilogy gave me a glimpse of a very specific neighborhood in London during the 50s. Unlike the Maisie Dobbs series, which is fiction, this series is a memoir, so we're seeing things through the eyes of the author, Jennifer Worth, and her experiences as a midwife during that time. I really enjoyed the entire trilogy, and I was fascinated by the experiences of all the midwives, both the lay nurses and the Anglican sisters, as they delivered babies in all sorts of circumstances. Some of them were extreme, some of them were humorous, but the the midwives themselves were amazing. The things that they encountered, the things that they dealt with, and the way that they dealt with it, with compassion and love and humor. The book takes place actually at a crossroads. It's after the end of World War II, and the neighborhood that they're in, the East End, is near the docklands, the dock, the shipyards. So it was hit really heavily during World War II with the bombing, and so there's a lot of destruction. People are living in conditions that are unsafe, in houses that are condemned, but they have nowhere else to go. And so we're in that time period. And then we're, we're looking at things as they begin to change, because in the 60s, the tenements were demolished and the residents were rehoused. Also in the 60s, um, birth control in the form of the pill came into being, and it gave women more options and more control over how and when they had children. Also at this time, health care in England was changing so that more women went to hospital rather than having a midwife deliver their babies at home. So we're at the co- we're at a crossroads, and I love books that give me glimpses of the lives of people living in different times or places than my own. I don't know about you, but I, I do think that many of us who weren't alive in the fifties might have a specific view of them uh, given to us by movies and television. Since I grew up in the states, um, I tend to think of the fifties from television as you know suburban moms picket fences, families with 2.5 children and a dog, etc. In my brain, I think it's kind of a mashup of Leave it to Beaver and maybe some Mad Men thrown in there, um, but also with a dose of historical reality from my women's studies classes during my undergraduate work. At any rate, none of those pictures is what we get in these stories. None of those pictures shows us what it was like in the East End of London in the 50s. So there are stories in this book of families with anywhere from three to 20 children living in one bedroom or one room apartments. They're lucky if they have a lavatory on the same floor, but many still have outdoor plumbing and the conditions, at least to my modern eyes, seem extremely harsh. But this is the world in which the midwives worked and they did their best to bring healthy babies into that world. Worth describes the prenatal visits with the mothers, as well as the follow-up visits after the babies are born. She describes the midwives' relationships with doctors who were men and who rarely attended the births unless there was something unusual or dangerous about the pregnancy. The midwives really were on their own in terms of delivering. And I don't want to tell you too much because I really do want you to read the stories for yourself. But this trilogy gives a fascinating look at a specific time, place, and profession. Worth writes with candor and humor, and it really does read like a a novel more than just a memoir. The nuns and the other midwives that she works with are an assorted bunch of backgrounds and personalities, and they help to bring color and life to these stories and to the series as a whole. The second book, which is called Shadows of the Workhouse, is definitely a darker series. A darker, it involves darker stories. Excuse me. Worth moves away from only stories of the midwives and the delivery of babies and looks at the effects that the workhouses, though long closed when she came to the East End, um, the effect that they were still having on the lives of the people that she encountered in the tenements. 
In addition to being midwives, many of the women were also nurses and did district nursing rounds. So their jobs involved much more than just labor and delivery. So they they encountered all sorts of people during their rounds. And, you know, I'd heard of the work houses, of course. Um, anyone who's read Charles Dickens probably has at least a basic idea of what they were. But here, Worth tells stories of the people that she encountered who had been directly affected by experiences of the workhouse. So just for a little basic background, um, often in the up until, you know, even in the in the 20th century, when people ran out of money or found themselves destitute without any other options, uh, they would end up in a workhouse where conditions tended to be horrible. Yes, they did receive shelter and food, at least to some extent, but families were separated. Men and women were kept separate. Children were kept separate from both men and women. So families were completely separated. They often never saw each other again. Many people died from disease, malnutrition, and overwork. And many people preferred death to ever ending up in the workhouse. In fact, the memory of the workhouses was so far-reaching that Worth writes of many people that she encountered who wouldn't go to the hospital because hospitals were in the buildings that were formerly workhouses. They converted them into hospitals after the workhouses closed. And whether these people had any direct experience with them or or not, they simply had family members who told stories, they still had a fear of the building regardless of its current purpose. They were afraid that if they went into that building, even if it was a hospital, they would never come out. Now, there are still moments of joy and humor in this book, but it, it was a much harder read for me because it does contain those elements of depression and despair. But as a history major, I know how important it is to try and understand how cultures evolve and why and how different periods in history in a given place shape and mold the place and the people who live there. So it really was a fascinating read to understand more about the lives of of the people with whom Worth and her fellow nuns and midwives were interacting. It's, it's definitely a fascinating read, even if it is a little darker. And then finally, the third installment of the trilogy is called Farewell to the East End. And it documents that transition as the tenements became a thing of the past, as the midwives went their separate ways and the sisters were reassigned when Nanata's house was closed. We do get um, some more of the personal stories and backgrounds of the people who have populated these stories, finding out sometimes where they grew up or how they became nurses or midwives or nuns, and some of what happens to them after the series ends. If I'm completely honest, I will say that I missed the stories of the midwives, mothers, and babies not being as prevalent in the second two books, but that doesn't mean I didn't enjoy the entire series because I did. Like I said, it's told with compassion and humor, and it really does give us an insight into a certain time and place. And I also really like that the series crosses a variety of, of genres from history to women's stories to memoir to sociology and social history, even some religion and philosophy from the nuns get thrown in there. The series is really interesting. It's really well written and well told, and it's one that I highly recommend to you. We do have to take a quick break, though, so when we come back, we'll be talking about the PBS series based on Jennifer Worth's Call the Midwife trilogy. Stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review 
podcast. Before the break, we were talking about Jennifer Worth's excellent Call the Midwife trilogy. And now I want to turn our attention to the PBS series, which so far has had five seasons. Season six, according to IMDb, the Internet Movie Database um, on the Internet, will be starting on Christmas Day of this year. I'm very excited. As I mentioned earlier, my best friend is the one who turned me on to the books as well as to the, the TV series. And lucky for me, all five seasons were on Netflix when I started watching, so I got to binge watch them all at once. So the series is adapted by Heidi Thomas from the best-selling memoirs of Jennifer Worth. This drama series is a moving, funny, colorful look at midwifery and family in the 1950s East End of London. It follows newly qualified midwife Jenny, who joins an eccentric, lovable community of nuns who are nurses at the novice house. Jenny is surprised to find herself at a convent, though she thought she was being sent to a small private hospital, and is initially daunted by her surroundings most notably the formidable sister Evangelina and the unconventional sister Monica Joan. But Jenny gradually begins to feel to find her way and develops incredible friendships among the nurses as they are drawn into the lives and homes of the women and families they treat. If, you've, if you joined us for the last episode, you know that I do have some issues with books that are um, turned into movies or TV series because of things that are left out, the things that are added in, characters who are eliminated or changed almost beyond recognition, etc. I mean, I could go on and on. I tend to be a book snob, and I do get a little cranky when my favorite books are messed with. But here's the thing. It doesn't bother me with Call the Midwife. As I mentioned, there have been five seasons, so it's definitely covered a lot of ground, and they've now moved beyond the books in many ways. Uh, But I really enjoy it, and I have from almost the first moment when um, I was watching and the eccentric sister Monica Joan opens the door of Nanatis to Jenny and starts spouting philosophy, uh, pretty incomprehensible philosophy, and at the understandably confused young Jenny. And then she pulls her into into Nanatis' house, and um, they eat an entire cake together. So (laughs) it, it, it it sucked me in with really whimsical, delightful humor. And part of it is that it's incredibly well-written, it's well-acted, and it's well-done in general. I think they did a great job on the casting and on the sets and the costumes, which are beautiful. Um, Part of what I I love about it is the music. Uh, The music that accompanies each episode is from that time period, and I love music from that era. And they, they definitely have taken some liberties with characters and plot lines expanding both uh, way beyond the scope of the book, which is understandable because it has gone on for five seasons and has been renewed for at least a sixth. And if I wanted to be really cranky and snobbish about it, I could point out everything that is different, what doesn't exist in the book, what what should have existed in the series that does exist in the book, etc. But I really just enjoy this series. And Maybe it's because I started watching it before I started reading the book. Um, I checked the book out from my library, as I said, and I had to wait until a copy was available. Um, But I was able to start watching the series on Netflix right away. So maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. Maybe it's because I tend to enjoy British television, the BBC and PBS productions in general. Um, I apologize that I'm not explaining it better, but the basic point that I'm trying to make is that it really is a great series. I love the actors. I love the writing. As I said, I love the sets and the costumes. Um, I've always been kind of in love with clothing from that time anyway. So uh, the clothes, the outfits and the shoes are amazing. (laughs) Um, On a quick side note, when it comes to actors, have you ever seen the movie Matilda? Um, It came out, I think it was about 20 years ago now, but it's based on a book by Roald Dahl. And um, if you have then you might remember the actress who plays the Trunchbull, the the villain in the movie. And the actress who plays the Trunchbull is the same actress who plays Sister Evangelina in the Call the Midwife series. And so she's really good in both roles. But I will admit that it took a bit getting used to uh, seeing her playing a nun after I was so used to having seeing her in this role as the Trunchbull. The Trunch Bowl, excuse me. It's one of um, mine and my family's favorite movies, so I've seen it a bunch of times. So it it gave me a bit of a shock, but she's really good. 
And actually, I, I love all the characters. I love all the actors who play the characters. So I, I can't speak. I think I'm gushing. I can't speak highly enough about this um, this series. And I would highly recommend it to you, especially if um, you're not a big reader. And I don't know why you're listening to a book review podcast if you're not a reader. But hey, welcome. We, we love everyone here. But if you're not a big reader, it's still a good way to get yourself into this series to um, see some of the things that I was talking about with the books. This this picture of life in London in the 50s, this picture of midwives and the nuns that they're working with, the conditions that they encounter, the um, remnants of the war that are still happening, the remnants of the workhouse. They do some of the stories in the books really well so that you get um, an even more poignant viewing of those stories that you read about. So as I said, it's it's really well done. To sum up, I, I love the books. I love the PBS series and I do highly recommend them both to you. Whether you love to read or whether you love to watch PBS series or whether you love to do both, uh, get the books, check out the series on Netflix. I think you'll really enjoy them. And we do have to take another quick break. But when we come back, we'll be moving on to our second set of books for today, and that is the Fox and O'Hare series by Lee Goldberg and Janet Ivanovich. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Do you want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do? All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating, Eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. As I mentioned before the break, our next topic up for discussion is the Fox and O'Hare series by Lee Goldberg and Janet Ivanovich. Uh, if you're looking for a tie-in between my choices for today's podcast, I don't really think I can give you one, except that they're both series that I've enjoyed and I kind of randomly chose them for today's podcast. I wasn't actually familiar with the author Lee Goldberg before starting this series, but I've read all of Janet Ivanovich's Stephanie Plum books and have really enjoyed them. I've read some of her other books and enjoyed them. So when I saw that she had this new series with uh, co-authored with Lee Goldberg, I thought I would check them out. Uh, the newest in this series, uh, which is called The Pursuit, just came out on June 21st. And full disclosure, I haven't actually read it yet, but I'm very much looking forward to it. It'll be on my summer reading list. Um, in fact, these books are the perfect summer or beach reading. They're fun, they're lighthearted, they're witty, and they're full of characters that are just as wacky as they are enjoyable. So the, the synopsis of this series. FBI Special Agent Kate O'Hare is known for her fierce dedication and discipline on the job, chasing down the world's most wanted criminals and putting them behind bars. Her boss thinks she is tenacious and ambitious. Her friends think she is tough, stubborn, and maybe even a bit obsessed. And while Kate has made a name for herself, for the past five years, the only name she's cared about is Nicholas Fox, an international crook she wants in more ways than one. Audacious, handsome, and dangerously charming, Nicholas Fox is a natural con man, notorious for running elaborate scams on very high-profile people. At first, he did it for the money. Now he does it for the thrill. He knows the FBI has been on his trail, particularly Kate O'Hare, who has been watching his every move. For Nick, there's no greater rush than being pursued by a beautiful woman, even one who aims to lock him up. But just when it seems like Nicholas Fox has been captured for good, he pulls off his greatest con of all. He convinces the FBI to offer him a job, working side by side with Special Agent Kate O'Hare. So right away, just from the synopsis, you can maybe see a few of the appealing qualities of these books. 
You have the very different personality and character types represented in Kate and Nick. And you know there will be a lot of friction and tension created by that. There is, of course, you know, the the prerequisite sexual tension as the two are definitely attracted. But they're so far, from what I've read, uh, are keeping it mostly professional. But it's definitely underlying all of their interactions. And I'm assuming that will probably change at some point in the future. But like I said, the books I've read and I'm not completely caught up, uh, they haven't acted on their attraction yet. I like um, both Nick and Kate as characters. Nick is the one that tends to make me laugh the most um, because he's, you know, he is that charming, audacious con man. Although Kate's more buttoned up personality also makes me laugh sometimes. But what really makes the books fun are the supporting characters who are really a motley assortment of people. Each book contains some kind of con plan between Nick and Kate and the FBI for the benefit of the FBI. Like as uh, as the synopsis said, Nick uh, manages to talk his way into working with the FBI to uh, bring down some of the other con men or to help them with some of the other cases that they have through his talents, which, you know, are conning and scheming and scamming. He convinces them that he can only work with Kate, and so they're tossed together using their skills, her skills as an FBI agent, his skills as a, a con artist. But they, so each book, they they have some scam going on that will benefit the FBI, whether that's bringing down um, a drug lord or finding uh, someone who's on the most wanted list, etc., They've always got some plan in place, but they can't do it just by themselves. So there's always a crew. Nick puts together a crew of people that will help them to carry off whatever scam they're they're trying to achieve. Um, they they put together teams of people with specific skills who can then help them pull off these jobs. Um, there's some of these these characters include um, the method actor who is super serious about every role that he takes on. It's as though every role, even when he's working for Nick and Kate, it's as though every role is, I don't know, Shakespeare wrapped up in an Oscar, a Tony, and an Emmy with the possibility of a Grammy, just for good measure. I mean, he takes it that seriously. And he sounds kind of stodgy, but he's really entertaining because he really embodies his roles. He has backstories. He has anything you can imagine and he inhabits that role to the fullest he is super serious about his craft and he brings a level of character development nick and kate aren't always sure what to do with but it works um there's also one of my favorite characters who is a woman who is convinced that she can drive fly or operate any kind of machinery no matter what it is whether she can or cannot whether she's ever driven, flown, or operated it before. She's convinced that just put her in this and she can take care of it. Whether it's a yacht, whether it's a jet, whether it's, uh, I don't know, heavy equipment, she can handle it. And it might not sound that funny, but believe me, she is a hoot and a half. And she, she's, she's, she's hard to even describe because she is hilarious in so many ways. Um, she's one of my favorite characters. There's also um, Kate's family. There's Kate's dad, who is retired from military from the military, where he did something, you know, secretive and and special ops of some kind. Uh, the the running joke is that he could, I think it says he could kill a person ten different ways with just his pinky f- finger. Um, this is a man who keeps grenades in his nightstand. <laughs> he's he's a little scary, but he's also just a dad who loves his daughters and a grandfather who loves his grandchildren. Um, And part of showing that love is by teaching his children and grandchildren how to kill people with their own pinky fingers. Or that maybe you should keep grenades in your own nightstand because you just never know. You should be prepared. Um, He's always there for Kate. He's really um, engaged and active in her life and in her sister's life and the life of their kids. He actually lives with Kate's sister um, on their property. So he is very involved in their lives now when he wasn't so much when they were growing up. And I admit it, I might be a little bit in love with Kate's father. <laughs> um, I know Nick is the lead male character, and he's charming and funny and sarcastic, which are all traits that I like. But for some reason, it's Kate's dad who always seems to make me smile in his books, who makes me just, I don't know, maybe he makes me grin, and I just, I kind of want to hang out with him. 
And I say this with apologies to my own father, whom I love, who is nothing like Kate's father. Um, but my dad's also not fictional, so he's infinitely superior to Kate's father. But I am a little bit in love with Kate's father. So there's my confession for the day. There's also Kate's sister and her husband and children, who are um, your typical kind of suburban family. Um, Kate's sister is a wife and mother, and if it weren't for her father and sister, who lead their less than typical lifestyles, she would be your just kind of typical wife, mother, soccer mom. And um, she provides, I think, the foil to Kate's character, reminding us that no matter how sucked in we are by the characters and by the story, these are not your typical protagonists. Uh, Kate's life is in no way normal. Um, so we see her in in juxtaposition to her sister and her quote unquote normal lifestyle. What I love about these books is that they're the kind of story that involves a whole slew of puzzle pieces that have to fall just perfectly into place in order for the con to work. In some ways, these stories uh, are a little bit unbelievable because no one could plan something so perfectly and anticipate every possible scenario and potential issue like they do in these books. But that unbelievability is exactly why I love them, exactly why I find them so enjoyable. I admit it, I love a good over-the-top story where things work out the way the plan was supposed to, where everything just falls into place. It reminds me of movies like The Italian Job or The A-Team, which was a movie and a TV show. Um, and that was where the character Hannibal always declares how he loves it when a plan comes together. It's true. I do love it when a plan comes together. Maybe it's because I feel like my own plans don't always come together. Um... And maybe, maybe I'm just happy that I don't have to do the actual planning of a, of a scam or a con that is this in-depth, this intricate, this detailed. But if you're looking for a good summer beach read, these books, I would say, are perfect. They have action, comedy, romance to an extent, a bit of mystery, and hijinks galore. If you're looking for hijinks, these are the books for you. I hope the, the series remains strong for a while because, as I keep saying, I thoroughly enjoy them and um, I would love to be able to look forward to them and to know that there are more books coming and more entertainment coming. That is all the time that we have for today. Thank you so much for joining me in our discussion of the Call to Call the Midwife trilogy by Jennifer Wirth, as well as the PBS series of the same name and the Fox and O'Hare series by Lee Goldberg and Janet Ivanovich. I hope you had as much fun as I did and that you will join me next time uh, when we discuss some other options for great summer beach reads. Don't forget, you can always learn more about the GSMC Podcast Network at G www.gsmcpodcast.com. You can subscribe to all of our podcasts on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. We're available on all kinds of apps out there, mobile devices, and you can also follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, Google+. Um, so download us, follow us. we love to hear from you. And I hope you'll join me again next time. But in the meantime, go get lost in a good book. <laughs>